Do you guys remember Cube World? You know, that cute little voxel-based game that, on the surface, looked a little bit like Minecraft, but once you actually got into it, was nothing like Minecraft? You know, the game with the cute little characters, and you could be an archer, or a ninja, or a warrior, or a wizard. You could be a skeleton man, you could be a goblin, you could be a dwarf. I remember Cube World. But, whatever happened to that game? What's going on, everybody? My name is Ingenious Clown, and this might be a little bit out of the blue, but I've had Cube World on my mind lately. Being completely insatiable when it comes to video games and video game news, I look at new games a lot. I, I like to browse the new releases list, and I like to browse, like, itch.io and IndieDB to look for something that might pique my interest. But the problem is, there's a lot of games. And there's a lot of games that take inspiration from other games. And lately I've been looking at a lot of like sandbox and RPG and survival games and like the mix between those and... Unfortunately, it seems like every time that I try one, there's just... There's, there's things that are missing. Either the gameplay doesn't feel right, the gameplay is not balanced enough for me to want to keep playing it, the gameplay doesn't... It doesn't draw me in enough for me to want to keep playing it, maybe the graphics just aren't quite polished enough. And, for some reason, this has made me just think back to Cube World. Now, for those of you who don't know, Cube World is an action RPG with a focus on exploration and combat that's in a voxel world that looks on the surface like it might be a Minecraft clone, but it couldn't be further from that. It was released in an alpha state in July of 2013, and it just it kind of went a little bit viral. But we'll get back to that in a minute. The game was released in an alpha state, and what was playable is a large world, very large world in fact, probably too big for my taste, with multiple biomes, many creatures, um, fun fluid combat mechanics with snappy responsive controls, addicting combat mechanics, you can have pets, you can go on quests to slay giant monsters, it had co-op, it had online co-op, it had all this in an alpha state. Plus, the world just looked absolutely gorgeous with the bright, high-contrast colors that they decided to use. And the monsters were just absolutely adorable, like every single one of them. Even the ugly-ass goblins and undead things were just... They're, they're, they're cute. They're cute, okay? But in spite of all that, it had terrible balance issues. It had a world that was entirely too large. And when I say it had terrible balance issues, I mean mostly the beginning game, because you would have these swords on the map and you would want to go towards those swords and those are your first quests and I'm gonna I'm, be, I'm using quests very liberally here those are your first quests you go to them and then you have to spend like a freaking half hour just chipping away at this giant monster just chugging potions and stuff and hoping that like friendly guys will walk by and help you out the beginning experience was awful like everything would destroy you it's crazy but for some reason, it was still addicting. Once you got some loot, once you got some skills and abilities to help you out, the game just started to click into place and it started to be a lot more fun. But uh, unfortunately, what you're gonna be seeing in the background is uh, gameplay of me before getting any skills, so I'm super weak. But I digress. Even with these balance issues, the game drew so many people in. It has this huge world, it has this awesome crafting system, it has pets, it has cute creatures, it has multiplayer. Multiplayer being one of the premier ways to get people to, to love your game. Explore the game with friends. It drew people in. And because of all of this combined, and of course the beautiful, amazing art style that they went with, the game went a little viral. The game sold way more than Wole, the developer, ever expected or I think even wanted. I'm pretty sure when it was launched, the site crashed multiple times. And I know you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with selling way more copies than you expected? Well, the problem with that is that people buy early access games with expectations. And while I'm sure most of you know that that's not probably what you should be buying into early access for, it happens anyway. People buy this game, and I think Wole was a little overwhelmed. He released a few updates, and as fans spread the news of the game to their friends, and more and more people bought it, 
There was more and more of a fan base and more and more of an expectation to constantly receive updates and news and stuff, but after just a handful of updates, Wole just completely disappeared for a long time. And this is around the time where most people probably forgot about Cube World. Developer drops the game, developer gives out a handful of updates, developer disappears. Most people are going to assume he ran off with our money. He's never gonna finish the game. He's never gonna keep updating the game. I mean, he didn't even post on Twitter for a long time. And like I said, this is probably where most people who were interested in the game completely forgot about it. I know for me, it completely fell off my radar. June of 2014 is when Wole disappeared and it wasn't until October of 2015 that he finally came back with a brand new update. That's almost a year and a half of just no communication, no news, no updates, no nothing. But fortunately for us, ever since October 2015, there has been a slow, not always steady stream of updates, but the updates are there. Currently, we haven't seen anything since August 21st, but I personally believe that Wole is completely committed to this game. He said as much himself, and while I know there are people that don't really believe that he's ever going to finish the game and that we're ever going to get an update, as somebody who once wanted to be a game developer, and as somebody who currently creates YouTube content, I can't see him throwing away all of this work. I can't see him throwing away this universe he's created. I can't see him getting rid of these ideas. Because ever since Cube World came out, I, I don't think we've had a game quite like it. We've had Trove come out, but that game, uh, the, the game sucks. Trove sucks. I'm sorry if you like Trove. It's not a terrible game, it's just, I played it. It's it's not Cube World. It's just not Cube World. Although it just, it seems like it desperately tries to be. Would I have liked to see more updates to Cube World? You know, when I first thought of that question, my answer was yes, but as I think about it more, if I had a constant stream of updates and the players had a constant stream of updates, would we really be ex as excited for the game as we are now? I mean, I guess excited isn't quite the right term, but whenever this massive update that Wale's been working on finally gets released, there's going to be a whole lot of new life breathed into this game. If you've played Cube World back when it came out, even if you were disappointed, I'm willing to bet that you're going to go back and play it some more once that giant update drops. It's almost as if the alpha was there for like a paid demo, to build some capital so he could actually work on the game full time. And he has been. He's gotten enough support from the beginning to be able to live off of that money and create the game that he wants to make. He's making the game true to his vision. And I think there's just something amazing and beautiful about that, especially in this day and age of publishers just swooping in and making developers do things that they really don't want to do to their games. I think we just all need to be patient. Although by now, uh, I'm probably just dredging things up from the past that don't really need to be dredged up. But who, I don't care. I've got, I've had Cube World on the mind. I just wanted to make this video to remind people that the game exists and that this update is gonna have a lot in it, even if it's released in 2020, and that it's gonna breathe some new life into the game. So don't give up on Cube World. Just, if you have a whiteboard, maybe write it down or maybe keep it on the back of your mind and. Just make sure that you keep tuned in to your favorite YouTube channels or your favorite news outlets, or maybe if you have Twitter, just follow them on Twitter and see what comes from it. If you're interested in reading a consolidated list of all the updates that have been teased by Wale on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and whatever other social media outlets he's on, you can follow a link to a Reddit post that does all that consolidation and just read through that. It has everything annotated and sourced so you know where it came from. It's all pretty interesting, and I, for one, am maybe not hyped for the update, but I'm pretty excited because it looks like it's going to make the game, which is already pretty good, into something even better and more magical and more polished and better feeling. And that's something to be excited about, in my opinion. But hey, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Have you played Cube World? What do you think of the updates? What do you think of the silence? 
Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And please be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video as I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Twitter at IngeniousClown and hit that subscribe button for more awesome gaming content here in the future. And I'll see you next time.